I am shooting on the floor because this video is about low angle photography. I haven't done a composition video in quite some time and right now we're in the midst of what we're calling photo assignments, which are these challenges that I'm giving you guys to limit yourself to one specific area about photography, make images, and then submit them. And I show the best of them on the show. And so I figured since right now we're dealing with low angle photography and we're going to have some variations coming up on that, that it might be good to provide some instruction on what we're talking about. So this video is all about shooting low angle. Traditionally, a photograph represents a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface, such as a print or even a computer screen. And there are different techniques that we can use to create the illusion of depth. We can use lighting, we can use overlapping subjects, focal length, depth of field, we can use perspective, and even camera angle. Now, camera angle is actually one of the most effective uses, but the least commonly explored, mainly because most angles are shot at eye level because that's where photographers are the most comfortable and it's the most natural thing to do when you pick up the camera. However, this video is about exploring low angle viewpoints. If you've ever taken a drawing class, you probably have worked with using horizons and vanishing points. When we first begin to draw, one of the biggest challenges we have is creating depth on a two-dimensional surface. A commonly taught technique is using a horizon line and creating one or more vanishing points. With this study, we use horizontal and vertical lines to represent their dimensions, and then depth is created by using diagonal lines that lead towards these vanishing points. These converging lines replicate the way that our eyes perceive depth. In photography, we don't have to draw anything. The perceived dimension of depth naturally exists, but paying attention to where the horizon exists can add an interesting element to your photographs. When you shoot photographs at low angles, the horizon line drops to the bottom of the image, forcing the subject matter to fill the image in a more dramatic way. Most commonly, this is used to communicate a sense of awe or even authority. Historic and religious subjects, for instance, can take on a sense of power and importance as they are perceived as larger than they are when we use this point of view. Size is emphasized as well. Having people in your image near the bottom not only gives them emphasis without using size, but also gives you a point of reference for scale. With wide angle lenses, edge lines will converge in a somewhat unnatural way. They are no longer straight up and down, but they kind of hang towards the center at an angle. But we naturally perceive this, and it can be effective in what you might be trying to say with the image. There are other interpretations that you can make with low angles as well. For example, shooting at eye level is familiar and the most natural, but in the case of a series of images by Abelardo Morel, Low vantage points are combined with childhood toys to illustrate childhood. Objects seem larger in scale from this angle as they seemed to us when we were younger, a very effective approach with a simple solution that communicates the intent beautifully. You can also find interesting perspectives in street photography with images like Irving Penn's Sore Foot and Elliot Erwitt's depictions of dogs. Portraits from low angles can be the most challenging and it's really difficult not to be too extreme with them. Typically the camera is just simply lowered to give that effect of power or importance, but you have to be careful. Low angles will accentuate features that most people are usually most self-conscious about. So if you've ever tried this, you've probably gotten some less than positive feedback from your subjects. Proceed with caution. Usually dropping the camera slightly and giving your subject more room to breathe in the composition will achieve this effect without offending people. It's also worth noting that you can create additional interest by combining angles in your composition. So the low angle straight on will give you a dramatic effect to your composition, but objects can appear flat. They don't have that depth we've been talking about, particularly with architecture. Combining a low angle and rotating the subject or your position with the camera can make things feel more natural and add the depth to the picture that you're looking for. Also common is combining low angle with what we refer to as Dutch angles. Originating from German Expressionism in the 1920s, they are used commonly in cinema. The Dutch angle is achieved by simply tilting the camera to make the horizon off axis. Now this is usually done to create a sense of disorientation and can certainly be effective. Unfortunately though, it's striking but easy to achieve and often overused. Even worse, it communicates very strongly and can be out of place if the intent is actually something else. But in the right situation, it can be extremely effective.
Right now, obviously, our theme is low-angle photography, and if you'd like to submit your images, you can share them on Instagram or Twitter by using the hashtag photo assignments. And then I will also put a thread in Facebook. If you go to the Art of Photography Facebook page, remember to like it, set up for notifications, and you'll know when that is up, and you can share your images there, and I will pick some to feature on the next video. We are doing photo assignments every Monday. I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and as always, Subscribe to The Art of Photography for more videos. Until the next one, I'll see you guys then. Hopefully not on the floor. Until then, later.